here, we're going to show you how to apply payments in the deposit list. When you receive your EOBs and your insurance payments, you want to get those posted into Medisoft right away. In order to post insurance payments in Medisoft, click on the bag of money, which is your Enter Deposits and Apply Payments screen. You can also access Enter Deposits and Apply Payments from the Activities menu by clicking on Enter Deposits and Payments. This will open up your deposit screen. Your deposit screen contains all money that was entered either through the transaction entry screen if you've entered copays or by posting insurance payments here. One thing to note is that you always want to post insurance payments through the enter deposits and apply payment screen and not through the transaction entry screen. By posting through the transaction entry, sc entry screen it prevents you from transferring responsibility from a primary to a secondary carrier or to your patient if there's a patient balance left. Click on New, enter your deposit date, and select your insurance and payment method of check, and you can enter your check number. Your description field, you can leave it blank, or you can enter something in here. If you want to enter the date that, that's actually on the check, simply type in a date. It's just a text field. Your payment amount will be the full amount of the check, whether it's for one patient, 10 patients, or 100 patients. Select what insurance you receive that check from, and your payment codes, if they're set up correctly in your insurance window, um, your payment codes will default. When we save it, we now have a check deposited on January 26th. We receive that check with the check date of January 20th. It's from Aetna for $100, and it hasn't been applied to any patient account yet. To apply this check, click on the Apply button at the bottom, and it'll open up your payment application window. It's telling you here at the top that the insurance you're posting for is Aetna, and you can go in and you can start posting to your patients. So we're going to select our first patient, and we're going to click Enter, and it will show you here what insurances the patient has entered in their account. In this case, the patient only has a primary insurance of Aetna, which matches what you're posting for. It will also tell you here you have an unapplied amount of $100, which was our full check amount, and we haven't applied that to any patients. In this window, it will show your date of service, your procedure code, how much you billed, and what the remainder balance is. To apply a payment, click in the payment screen. Type in the amount of the payment from the insurance carrier. If there's any deductible, type the amount in the deductible field, and this will be indicated as a patient responsibility on your patient statements. Your allowed amount will consist of your payment plus any deductible and any coinsurance amount. In this case, we have a $20 payment and a $10 deductible, and if the patient is also responsible for, let's say, a copayment of $10, we would add up those amounts and our allowed amount would be $40. This is generally indicated on your um, pay, on your EOB from your insurance carrier. The, it, the way the program works is when you post an allowed amount and you hit tab or enter, it'll automatically calculate the adjustment, which is the amount that is written off, and it's the difference between what you billed and what the insurance company allowed based on reasonable and customary. Okay, tapebacks would be covered in a more advanced class. It's not something we do in basic training. The complete button means that you're no longer expecting payment from this insurance carrier for this particular charge. If there was a balance left over, it would now transfer to the patient. If the patient had a secondary insurance, that balance would now become secondary insurance responsibility. The next field is rejection. You can create a list of rejection codes, which we can customize a patient statement to have those codes print on your patient statement. So it's a way of communicating with the patient to let them know why they're getting a bill. To create a rejection code, you can right click on rejection as in Medisoft anywhere else where you have a list menu, you can right click and create something new and add it to that list. So we'll create a new rejection code. That message will now be included on your patient statement right under this line. And again, that is something that has to be customized onto a patient statement. Go down to the next line apply the rest of your payment. If there's no deductible, you can skip over the field, put in your allowed amount. Again, it will automatically calculate the difference between what you billed and what the insurance company allowed based on reasonable and customary amounts and your contract with the carrier. It'll automatically adjust that $400. And if you wanted to create another note to the patient statement um, for two different types of balances. You have options down at the bottom. 
If you want an alert every time a claim is marked done, and it, again done is indicating that the claim was marked complete and the claim is now done for this carrier, and any remaining balance would transfer to a secondary insurance if the patient had one, or over to the patient. Typically, I turn these options off. Um, if you, you'll see as you do a lot of posting, it gets a little bit annoying to always have a pop-up every time you save a payment. You have an option to bill remaining insurances now. So this would be for paper claims. If you have a secondary insurance that you print to paper, once you save this payment, it'll prompt you to print out a secondary claim form. And the other option is to print a statement now. A print statement now, typically I turn that off and I use it as necessary. So if I know that I need to print out a statement for this particular patient, I would click on the print statement now button and I would hit save payments and adjustments and it would prompt me to create a statement. Now as of right now I don't have a statement created with the customization to include the rejection code so you will not be seeing those on this statement. Now I'm going to click the save payments buttons up oh, before I do that. One other thing, if you wanted to check the transaction entry where this claim was entered, click on view transactions, it'll take you into transaction entry. You can select the claim by clicking on the three dots next to document and selecting your date of service and that'll show you your transactions that were entered. So if you wanted to check the diagnosis code, you wanted to see if possibly there was an unapplied payment that was not applied to the charges, you'd be able to view this screen. You can't make any changes in here while you have the deposit list open, but you are able to view the information. Once you close the screen, you'll be back in your deposit list. Throughout the program, you'll see view e-statements. E-statements is related to an electronic statement service. Um, it's called Bill Flash, and it's something we'll be discussing in a later part of the lesson. We're going to click on Save Payments and Adjustments, and it's going to prompt us to create and print a patient statement. When you're printing a statement for patient balance only, you always want to select Remainder Balance. And you're going to click on Create, and that'll create the statement for the patient. Our unapplied amount goes to zero, indicating that our payment has been fully applied. And when we close this window, you'll see our Aetna check for $100 now has a zero unapplied amount. If you wanted to see the detail of what you posted this payment to, click the Detail button while you have it highlighted. It'll show you what, what patient or patients you've applied payments to, and it'll show you where you applied those payments. So we'll show you procedure charge, payment, deductible, write off, and again repeated for the second procedure. So if you happen to be posting a large check and you lose your place, you can always come in here and you can see what patients you've already applied payments to. If you want to report for the day or a certain time period of all the deposits that were entered, click on print We'll preview the report to the screen and select the date range for the payments that you'd like to see on the report. Click OK. And if we go to the second page, here's the $100 Aetna check that we entered, and here's the $20 in cash that we got from Dwight for his copay today. And it gives you report totals for checks, cash, credit cards, electronic payments, and your total amount.